As far as updates, you've mentioned that the authorities have gotten involved. How have they gotten involved? Yes. Okay. So because of the episode that I did with you, a lot of more, a lot more girls um, started to come forward, right? Including one girl who I actually, I don't know if you remember, I was debating bringing her up on the last episode and I, and Uh I refrained from that. Was she the, like the young one? Gina. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So Gina, I, 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 I was going to bring up the fact that he had sent me her video and how like that caused me a lot of distress too when I realized that, you know, she had, she was diagnosed with HIV and, and all of that. So I ended up not bringing her up because I just wanted to respect her privacy. And that's just not something that I wanted to like throw out there in case she didn't want to. But the crazy thing is, is that like two days after the episode came out, I, she made a TikTok about it and her TikTok went viral. So y'all know I've come to terms that I don't know who gave me AIDS or HIV, right? So today I got a message about an interview that I should watch. And this interview happened to include a celebrity man that I was sexually with for a few years and I actually had feelings for this person. Let's just say this interview put a very bad light on this person. And I've dealt with cops over this person. This man has been with me and everybody else doing the same thing with everybody else. And I uh, I don't know how to just brush it off anymore because it's like, what if, you know, what if this is the person who did this to me and he's living his best life? I can't do anything about it. I have it now. I'm half blind from it. I'm dealing with it. And she was basically insinuating that after watching the episode, she started kind of thinking like, okay, well, like if you've done this with her and you've done this with other girls, like, are you the one who gave this to me? Like, it was kind of like, obviously this is all like speculation. We don't, we don't know. She does. We don't know who gave it to her. Right. Yeah. I don't know if he has it or not. I've never, ever said that I think that he has HIV. My thing is included in my lawsuit is that I believe that he's knowingly infecting girls with STDs. He gave me chlamydia and he gave me HPV, okay, which is human papillomavirus, which is something that can um, turn into cervical cancer mm-hmm. later on, especially if you have a history of cancer in your family, which I do. Oh, no. Yes. So... Um, that's kind of like how that happened. Um, but she made a TikTok and she was just kind of upset. She was upset yeah. about it. Just and like realizing that like, oh, this could have been the dude that infected me. with. Yeah. Like, like who knows? Who knows? Because of the negligence and the recklessness. Right. Uh-huh. So she made a TikTok and then she reached out to me. And I'm not going to get into the context of our conversation. Was it like a friendly conversation? Right? Yeah, like supportive. It, yeah, yeah, it was friendly. She actually told me, she, I, I told her, I was like, this is crazy because I, w- I almost mentioned you on the episode and I refrained from it because I was scared that you were going to be mad. And she was like, no, not at all. Like, she's like, I would not have been upset if mm-hmm. you mentioned me at all. And we just kind of started talking and then like more revelations were coming. And mm-hmm. there are things that she was telling me that other girls have told me before it's crazy how how like the pattern the pattern is so consistent with every single girl that he's encountered so i made a tiktok yeah stitch replying to her after i got the okay and and she was like after she let me know that she wouldn't have been bothered that i brought her up on your uh-huh. on your episode i made a tiktok basically saying i think that she's referring to an interview that i did with sloan mm-hmm. and and then i just kind of spoke about spoke about that and i said um you know, unfortunately, he sent me a, a video of her and that caused me distress as well. And I don't even Oof. remember what else I said in, in the video. But yeah, and that video got like three million views in two days. And yeah. I guess he was like, we got to get this shit shut down. Yeah. Shut down my whole account, had community guidelines on every single video. I had to contact TikTok's legal team and be like, if this was a personal favor, then I'm taking legal action against you guys as well. And, then and my account was literally put back in Yeah. the next day. Oh, that's so scary. I mean, it's great that you are coming together with these other people. So, like, you know, you're supporting each other's stories. There's, like, a lot of people who have now, like, are starting to speak on the situation. So that part's great. Everything else is unfortunate. And then mm-hmm. him, like, trying to silence it, too. It's, like, he's just up to no good as every other yeah, and executive you know what, and, and, you know, it's crazy. Um when the when the police first got so she had made a video when she made her tiktok and she said like i dealt with police over this person uh-huh. i had given the police the video oh really and they contacted her oh and they basically 
you know, and, and, and she was sick at the time. She's, she was really sick at the time with mm-hmm. like just being diagnosed. But he told her that I hacked his phone. And like stole the video for he yourself? He told her that I hacked his phone and took the video. So now I'm I'm like, he must he must have told like any other girls who have asked him, like, have you distributed mine or whatever? Who knows? That's probably what he's saying because his, his lies. Do you think just, he believes his own lies almost? It seems like he's convincing, like convinced himself. Like living in delusion. Almost. I think he's living in delusion because even yeah. to the it, there was another TikToker who did a deep dive on him named Becca Day. Yeah, she did a, a really extensive deep dive on him. According to Shelly, the first message that Diplo sent her on Snapchat was him requesting that she sent him nudes. At the time Diplo began requesting these, he was 36 and Shelly was 17. Diplo then allegedly began sending nudes of himself and then asking Shelly to send him very specific nude photographs. At this time, Shelly had never even had a boyfriend, nor did she know how to carry on a flirtatious conversation, let alone with a grown man. And he DMs her and he's like, hey, like, uh... Can I take you out to pizza so we can talk and blah blah blah? Like start saying all these weird things and 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 he starts it like saying that um, you know, Quinn Blackwell has severe mental health issues and she's just mad because you know our music situation didn't work out. And Azalea Banks, she lives on another planet. <sighs> she she's on a completely different planet. And then with me, he was saying like, by the way, like ask her for her ID. She she was born in 1995. I was born in 1996, <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah. Second of all, he said, um, ask her for any communications of us from before the year 2020. That's the smoking gun for you. She won't show it to you. So I ha- I sa- I literally was like, Becca, here's a picture of my ID. Here's all the communicate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't say all, but I was like, here's communications proving with the timestamp. You can literally see on my MacBook. I sent her a recording of because it has like the dates, you know, like mm-hmm. the metadata is there. Yeah. So Becca, she's not necessarily involved besides just covering what has been collectively shared online. Right. And then, right. And then she put this together and it led to Diplo reaching out to her to try to defend himself against her viral TikTok and. In his defense, he kind of went into detail about everyone who has been outspoken. And Mm -hmm. then each person, he just tried to discredit with whatever he like thought would like maybe convince Becca. They're crazy. They have mental issues. Like, okay, well, we all can't. We all can't be crazy. We (laughs) all can't have mental issues, you know. Um, And I guess he was kind of just trying to convince her to take it down. So in that, he offers her an audio recording of me. He says, what's your email so I can send you an audio recording? Why? It's so like he it's like, why is he? I mean, of course, we want him to acknowledge and like take accountability. But also at the same time, he's not doing any of that. He's no, making it so much worse. There's no accountability. And that's the saddest part. You <sighs> know, like I, I, I'm not going to give credit to like other abusers out there. I would never do that. But like when you think about it, isn't it so crazy how like think about like Shia LaBeouf yeah. or um I don't know if Army Hammer did this, but I feel like there's been so many different celebrities who have had allegations come out against them. And what their statements have been is, although I stand in solidarity with victims of abuse, I did not do these things. He has not once done that. He has not once said, I stand in solidarity with victims of abuse. I feel bad for victims. He he doesn't care because he doesn't feel bad. He doesn't. Instead, it's just like, how can I defend myself? How can I make them be the ones that are crazy? How you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just like, and he just wants to discredit you all. So he discredit offered to send this send this voice memo. Did Becca receive it? Do you know? Um, I don't know, but, but it's he taken from arbitration, right? Which yeah, that's what I believe. Which would have been technically Con- illegal. confidential and yeah. illegal, and that's just, this is what I'm saying. This is, but here's the thing. That's why he tried so hard to silence me, and now it's all mm-hmm. coming together. It's like holy shit. This is why he took me to arbitration. This is why he had the arbitration provision in there. This is why he wanted me silent because do you know how many girls have come forward since just your episode and just Gina's TikTok and my stitch? Like so many, so many have been reaching out to Becca. Girls have been reaching out to me. Mm -hmm. Um, I know Gina's taking legal action. Yeah, she so, is in the process of taking legal action. I know another girl who's also taking legal action, and I also want the viewers to know that aside from me, 
I'm one out of five girls who have already taken legal action against him. Mm. No one knows about the other four. Well, there was one that was public, the Vegas one. But the other three have all been kind of like, you know, what you would, what the arbitration was. Not arbitration, but like mediation or pre-litigation. It never really gets to the public. He's able to squash it before it gets. So... You've been put through the ringer as far as the legal battle. Is there an opportunity for people to join you and there's a class action lawsuit because there are more people who are coming forward? Like, could they, I mean, in any technical way, could they just join onto your lawsuit and it could become something that's more than just your case against him? I don't know. Have you had anyone, like, interested in that? I think... Most of the girls have been taking their own independent Mm. legal, legal action. I don't really. And because my case is so far along, I don't really know. I think for class actions, again, I don't really know. But I think for class actions, you would have to have started as one. Mm -hmm. Because at this point, it'd be like you getting in there and changing what you, I I guess they're not changing, obviously, but adding evidence that maybe they're not accounting for. Yeah, I mean, there could be a class action now if girls yeah. start, you know, yeah. And like, it could even be like... With other, I don't think I would be a part of it. I think it yeah. would be like whoever, you know. Something private. Yeah. So can you explain a little bit where your GoFundMe, like what that is going to and how you've been able to use that or what how you're going to hopefully use that? Yes, okay. So I'm so thankful that people have mm-hmm. been donating to my GoFundMe because if it wasn't for my GoFundMe, I would not have been able to afford the attorney that I have now. Yeah. And I like her a lot. She's great. Um, she's been awesome so far. She helped me get a granted TRO against him. So he filed a temporary restraining letter against me after my TikToks. And the judge denied it. The judge was like... What was his... Did he have a basis? What did he say it was for? He said... (laughs) Was it harassment? It said civil harassment. No, it was civil harassment. And he said... I remember you telling me about it. Yeah, it was was so weird. It was so... Like, yeah, it was weird. It was so weird. Um, How quickly was it denied? Like, does the judge, like, look at that pretty much right (laughs) away? The same day. Yeah. The same day. Um, so basically when you file a TRO, you have to write what the damages or the harassment is. And he basically said that the, the damages and the injuries were to his reputation. 